Pues, today I'm going to talk about injury management, um, how to cope with withdrawal symptoms, because withdrawal symptom is one of the most severe things when an athlete has to stop the exercise they would regularly doing, just like quitting smoking or alcohol or whatever that you have been perhaps addicted to or accustomed to do it all the time, suddenly you stop. There's a lot of negative energy um, comes out of you emotionally as well as physically. So if you know how to manage it, this you know recovery time becomes a little bit more pleasant than if you didn't know. First, I recommend you to take an injury diary. Um, this is the diary I started taking when I had a major lower back bulge disc injury about seven years ago. Um, it was the first time I had such major injury that really made me scared that I may not be able to even recover or you know I couldn't walk, I couldn't, uh, I couldn't even urinate on my own and that was a scary experience for me emotionally as well as physically. So I started to write a diary um, to let it out of the fear, but also um, you get secondary th or third opinions from different physician, physician, and sometimes the information confuses you. So I took the diary out and I kept the information and um, exercises everybody else gave to me and, and ticked the box which worked, ticked and then kept the ones it didn't work for me but in the future that became very useful because those exercise that was absolutely useless at the time when I had a huge inflammation became useful for, for other students who had a less degree of injury but needed some my, minor exercises and so all the knowledge actually does help and also um, uh, also anatomy and charts things like that um, sometimes, you know, bom they bombard you with pamphlets, leaflets, and at that time you're too emotionally vulnerable or you've already learned this 10 million times, so you think it's useless, but I kept in, kept that in my notebook and I cut it down and cut and paste because in the future when you have students who have the similar injury, they become super, super useful um, and also by the time you're fully recovered, you forget about which became a common sense to you. And second, what can you do during the injury? Know your condition. You have to, each injury has different conditions. Some encourages you to walk while you can't do the hopping. Some requires absolute rest. Some requires change of diet. Um, so you have to know the condition. I find it if you just go to one doctor, one's not really good enough to give you a full picture of what you are suffering. Um, injury happens with multiple reasons, um, so it is. I find it it's quite important that you get a few different views and then also knowledge and ideas, and then you will know. Um, also, you you have to experiment because every back person, every people. Every injury is slightly different, although it might be common lower back injury, but conditions are different. So you have to know what helps you to recover. Um, could be very gentle swimming, could be backward walking, could be low weight extension exercise, or could be absolute rest. Absolute rest is probably the hardest one because you're mentally going like this. So then you have to search for the music, paintings, or whatever that actually gives you some kind of rest so that you can help your body to recover. But also know the duration of suffering. If the doctor said that's a six weeks injury or a six month injury, usually they are right. Even if you think, oh, I'm fit, I can recover better. But if you're really fit, which means you have to also go through perhaps more frustration than people who are unfit. So that time, if when you start to recover, perhaps quicker than other non-fit people, but you tend to go jumping straight back in and you re-injure re yourself. So if they say six months, 
to learn yourself for six months. It doesn't go short and don't have a wishful thinking. If it does happen shorter, bonus, but don't plan things with wishful thinking. Um, and the third, you have to think of the cause of the injury. Do write down um, what ha happened before the injury. Uh, just a rough diary of physical condition, what sort of competitions you had or whatever it is that you have to do physically do but emotionally did you have emotional events in your life um, or diet have you changed your diet have you been eating too much have you been indulging yourself too much or have you been on too much of a strict diet every component of that particularly sleep because that's the most important time that you recover yourself any of these components, physical exercise, emotional being, and diet, digestive system affects your recovery. Um, so do write down and observe what may have caused you. It's not usually one thing, it's a multiple of everything, because that can help you to plan your recovery. Um, then fourth, focus on your recovery. Okay, so look at the diet, look at your sleep, um, and also plan ahead what you can do with recovery exercises um, food is probably one of the most important thing that I did look at um, when I had lower back injury I never was really careful about the food I eat although I never had a bad diet I must say compared to the normal public um, I pretty much ate quite traditional Japanese food with lots of veggies and not so much um, overboard with meat and uh, oily stuff etc but still I wasn't really careful about quantity um, and also the combination of the food that could help um, with what I was doing because every exercise if you're doing competitive karate or traditional or more of endurance exercise each physical outburst or could be you might be a very a nerdy computer person to use a lot of brain work to so require sugar but what sort of sugar you intake um, it affects your recovery in a great way so do study and uh, do look over how you eat and also what sort of food you need just because you had a joint problem take glucosamine because it what generally says it's not going to help because concentrated amount of elixir of one component it's it's gonna it can act as a poison as well so it's a wholesome approach that you have to take um, and the more you know what you're intaking whether mental side and um, environment you put in with the people around you it definitely change the way you recover and that kind of thing takes a lot of time so it's a great opportunity injury happened for a reason and you can just start putting a lot of energy learning new things that you you were spending a lot of time running around when you are not injured um, also fifth I find it important that you don't really see um, super active people during that time because when you um, are particularly just freshly injured it, it you tend to get jealous of people who can move. It was very difficult to, when I had a back injury, to go back to the dojo to even say hello because, you know, obviously I was so addicted to exercise of the dojo and being in the dojo and when you can't be apart, it, it, it gives you a psychological barrier as well. And also people who injured me, Perhaps, you know, like I, I would, you know, rationally, brain wise, you know, that just was pure accident. But can I be as mature when you are still very, very injured and a vulnerable, avoid seeing active people, even like, you know, seeing people running around? Uh, it just, it can be emotionally upsetting. So, you know, don't totally shut down, but maybe you also allow yourself to, you know, if something actually makes you feel insecure and jealous during that time you just avoid it and make sure that you you can be little clear-headed before you face this kind of thing and definitely invest your time and money 
for recovery. It's worth it. Um, your body is your temple. And a lot of people say, oh, I can't afford that. I mean, yeah, it is expensive. Um, but the money you spent on a recovery, like knowledge on, like natural path or whatever, food-wise, etc., um, or massage, rejuvenation, um, could it be a concert you go to, arts museum, you buy something completely different from what you normally spend on, perhaps you spend a lot on an expensive uniform, but then maybe you just buy a, a really gorgeous, um, you know, a piece of artwork. L later, it's really, it's worth it. Because every money you spend on your body or spirit, your mind, you become rich yourself. Um, finally, this this tip is that you have to have belief that you're going to come out of this experience and you'll be stronger and better athlete than who you were. Okay. We all age, so when you were in a competitive sport, it's sometimes difficult to feel that way because there will be a time that you have to retire from a competitive sport in the same competitive way. You might be able to find another competitive sport that fits your physical condition, but you can't do it exactly the same way or same competition style in the same category compete with, you know, 20s teenagers forever um, or even if you are not doing competitive sports you just have to face the reality that we do our body do change um, but you can still be a better athlete at any time that's what I I found from my experience um, I of course I have to change and I have to reschedule and you have to all study constantly monitor what I can do now with my condition. But there's there are parts that I discovered myself. I can do this better than before because of the body and mindset and the wise knowledge I have. Then before, things I can share is a lot more than when I could just do a thousand kicks without any physical damage kind of thing. Um, there are a lot of things you can share, there are a lot of things you can be appreciated, appreciated of who you are from life experience but you got to believe that you're going to come out stronger than who you are even sometimes you can it's like i'm at the rock bottom i don't have any self self belief at the moment but still talk to yourself i'm going to come out of this i'm not going to come out from nothing in my hand i'm just going to i'm going to be who, better than who i am right now um, that self-belief, I think it's most important because a lot of people who just say, I'm injured, I'm too old, I'm going to quit. Then I kind of, you kind of defeated from this experience. Um, a lot of people get, you know, put on weight and, and then, uh, oh, I quit this because I got injured. It was too much. Maybe quitting for, uh, you know, having a pause might have been a very important time. But when you say, I just quit, and then without a plan of what else you can do, you can always change. You may not want to do one sport or forever. I believe karate is for the lifelong, but maybe not for other people. Or you might have been doing karate as a sport. And so you might need to find a different kinds of karate if you still love karate, but not you know can't compete anymore. And just, I find it's a bit of pity if, if you just quit it. When you find an injury, when you get an injury, find the things you can do with your condition, perhaps, or there's something that you can look forward to recovery so that you have the plan and then you have that lifelong passage of the journey that you can join because that's what Buddha is all about and that's what the Buddha is teaching so that it's never quitting, it's ever, never ending discoveries of self and life and everything around you then injury itself that is something that I don't enjoy but precious